OK, so we've all seen the footage this week of Leeds. Less talked about in the press has been Whitechapel, an area in London where there has been similar rioting. Now, it's an area with the biggest Bangladeshi community in the country. And we have bent over backwards as a nation to make the Bangladeshis and other immigrants in the area feel so welcome that we now have their schools, stations, street names, often only written in Bengali. We've got a market which would not be out of place in Bangladesh and we've got a whole host of women in the area who have been there for 30 years but don't speak a word of English. So out of touch with British culture are communities like this that locals rampaged this week. They actually protested in sympathy with students in Bangladesh who were upset about job quotas. They injured the police, they overturned cars, they damaged cars. Now, I can't comment on Leeds because I don't know it as an area, but this area in London I do know. I grew up in Newham, the neighbouring borough, which is also now a ghetto. I worked for six years in the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel, where we regularly had to do our consults via translators to Bangladeshi women who are isolated by their lack of language and to Bangladeshi men in traditional dress who have very little in common with British values. There may be plenty of people of different cultures in London, in the rest of the UK, but they are no longer assimilating. They are living in silos which become ghettos and they are completely out of touch with any values that I associate with being British. Multiculturalism is not working. Mm. Well, What do you think, Darren? No holding back there. Look, I uh, must say the past few days have made me genuinely fear for the future prospects of this country, right? I, I fear that the next generation are really going to have to go through the ringer uh, and I uh, just can't accept that uh, our politicians shouldn't be treated with absolute contempt for what they've done to us, to be perfectly honest. Well, I agree, but how do we get people to assimilate, Albie? Renee, I just find it extraordinary that someone who comes, someone who has mixed race children and comes from a, a mixed race family can essentially say multiculturalism has failed. Isn't your family proof that multiculturalism hasn't failed? I'm mixed race, Lynn May is mixed race. The mixed race cohort is the fastest growing cohort in this country of, ethnic, of, the, of the different ethnic demographics. So I completely appreciate there are some issues with some communities, but to say in an absolutist way, as you basically have just mm. suggested, multiculturalism has failed, is wrong, isn't it? Because so we're both here. I think that, and I think I mentioned this to you before, that when we had if we go back 40, 50, 60 years and we had the Windrush generation, and I am, as you rightly point out, part of a mixed family of that, there was complete assimilation. Because no, 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 I have to stop you there. When the Windrush came here, we attempted as Caribbean people to assimilate and we were repeatedly rejected. Well, so you should. We were rejected when it came to the workplace. As you saw, there were signs, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. We were pushed at the back of the queue for health care, for multiple things that we should have had the right to have because we didn't request to come here. After the Second World War, we were invited to help to rebuild Britain. So you can understand why other ethnic minorities who come here have had a look historically at how the Windrush generation were treated when we tried to assimilate. Why would any ethnic right. minority okay. want well, to assimilate? Nonsense. I think that is, I'm going to say this, I think that is nonsense because I think maybe those, those things were right about how much pushback you got, but you did try to assimilate and that happened. So after our, about 30 years. Okay, so in our family, we're living proof of that. I don't believe that the new um, immigrants that we have actually want to assimilate or are even trying. And I think maybe there's a religious element to that, whereas the Windrush um, generation were of Christians and wanted the same values, had the same values. So maybe there's a clash of culture that way. Because From Commonwealth countries as well. Yeah. No, I think what's happening is, with many that are coming over, I agree, there is uh, some who do not want to embrace British culture. But many of those who we are seeing in recent years, over the last 20 years, uh, they're coming here oftentimes because they don't have a choice. Britain's uh, geopolitical policy is often, along with NATO and America, we continue to invade their countries we Bangladesh, continue we Pakistan. continue uh, and what happened in the 40s 
We're now talking about 2023. So you don't think 1940s, where people are still alive from that era, hasn't had an impact of what Britain has done to the Asian continent? You don't think that has think any impact? impact now. What, so they should all come over here and treat it as a second That's Pakistan, what is what you're saying? No, no, hang on. All what come... Hang on, saying, no, 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 hang on, that. hang on, no. I'm not... I said some, firstly. Secondly, if you look... I said the Asian continent in terms of where India, Pakistan, Bangladesh is. If you look at uh, many Indians, they have come here and they are the fastest growing in terms of property ownership. So you can't cut, say, oh, you know, everywhere's ghetto or, you know, they are not assimilating because Indians do assimilate. Well, you can't. Assimilate. You go to Oldham, you go to Rochdale, you can actually pinpoint towns in Bangladesh and Pakistan where people have come from. Now, if you're so adamant that multiculturalism has been an overwhelming success story. Why did they all live in the same areas? Why did they all speak the same language? Do you have a problem, Why do you have a they problem with Jewish that? people living in Pinchley? If Jewish people do assimilate into British life. No, they Jewish don't. They, 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 live in, in, they also in live in Gateshead. I live in Stamford Hill. Hill. Hang do on. Do you have a problem with Jewish people living in Pinchley? No. So why do you why do you care? Do that Jewish people speak live, English? That, do that Jewish Muslims people speak English? Do area? Jewish people speak but, English? But, but, oh, Darren, can you answer the question? Do Jewish Darren, people can speak, I just? I answered your question. You answer mine. They do. do they they, they, they do, Darren. But to someone like you, if you go to Stanford Hill, they will refuse to speak to you. They'll call you a gentile. They will not like your sexuality. They will not want to speak to you. And you would say hello. Oh, well, and, whereas oh, every Muslim oh, let, would let me, say let, peace be upon you. We've, we've brought a different we've brought a different group of ethnic minorities, and we're asking you: Do you hold the same opinion to the Orthodox? Jewish community in Stamford Hill who do not even want to say hello to you. Uh, listen, I've got okay. absolutely loads of, of Jewish friends, so I find I've asked that you about the orth Orthodox I don't, community. I can't answer so, that so, question. I don't know anything so, about Stamford Lynn, Hill Orthodox Lynn, Lynn, let's Jews. Let's talk about Whitechapel, where the riots were this week. I have been there for six years as a female doctor, and I can tell you that I am not respected as a woman in this country, dressing as I do in Whitechapel and being a doctor by many of the Bangladesh. How do they disrespect you? Benjamin, we need to we need to bring Benjamin. Sorry, Benjamin. Do, when Lynn May you were there. <laughs> when Lynn May says we, and so we need to remember what happened in the 1940s and all these other things, is that not a sign that multiculturalism hasn't worked? Because nothing's happened to Lynn May. Is she been a victim? Uh, well, assalamu alaikum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look. You know, I think Lin May definitely has a point because, much like the Windrush generation, these people that are here aren't generally from the Middle East. They are from former British colonies and they were encouraged, whether directly or culturally, to move to Britain. They were told they were part of our empire. What I would say is that this cuts two ways. It would be ridiculous to say that there aren't problems because there are quite serious problems. If you look at East London, you know, they don't vote for the Labour Party anymore as they used to. They vote for their own candidates. Tower Hamlets isn't Labour run. It's run by a fairly extreme uh, Islamic leader that is, you know, many Muslims in the area find distasteful, but you know, most of them vote for him. And so that is a problem when you get communities separating like that. And I do think that the fact they can't speak English when they've lived here for decades isn't something that you should be afraid to, to call out because, I mean, they should have the ability, the help to learn English. It's a hard thing to, to do, especially if you're middle-aged or older. But you're cut off from the world. Yeah. You can't... You can't. Often they're reliant on their, their husbands if they're yeah. women and they can't help their kids at school. And so I think, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to raise those but things. But then what about the... What about... Uh... British expats who go to various parts of the world and they refuse to speak well, the native to, tongue. Well, it's up to those other parts of the world to introduce policies to sort that uh, out, but, isn't it? But uh, we, we are renowned, we are known for moving to countries Indeed. and not speaking Spanish, not speaking the native yeah, language. Yeah, I think that's wrong. I agree with yeah. you on okay, that. OK, as long right. as we're balanced.